Yeah, welcome to another session of the grammatical theory lecture. Today we will deal with X-bar theory. So last time we introduced basic trace structure grammars, rewrite rules. Now, um, and, and we introduced features to be able to um, formulate rule schemata to capture generalizations. Today I will show you how that um, kind of capturing uh, generalizations can be improved further and uh, we can have even more general phrase structure rules. Um, the reading material for this session is uh, section 2.5 in the grammar theory textbook. Um, please read that before or after watching that video. Okay, so um, uh, up to now we had one rule for nominal phrases um, that is the NP consists of determiner and noun rule and um, with this rule we can um, derive something like 30, 34a uh, ein Buch, a book that's pretty boring uh, in comparison to what is really out there so what kind of uh, noun phrases can be observed um, in German and English as well. And some examples are listed here in 34. So, uh, ein Buch, das wir kennen, a book that we know. Uh, I, I just read the English uh, translations. It's uh, the same in German. A book from Japan, an interesting book, a book from Japan that we know, an interesting book from Japan, an interesting book that we know, an interesting book from Japan that we know. So you can have a relative clause modifier, you can have an adjectival modifier, you can have any variation of the two. So as you see, there, there are a lot of different patterns if you just look at um, surface patterns, so what can appear together. But we can capture that with some very general rules and you will see how that works in a minute. Well, maybe two minutes. Okay, so um, the the uh, example in thirty five shows basically two rules. Um, the the first one is our rule that we had already combining a determinant and a noun, and now if you want to add. Uh, adjectives and NPs, we could uh, try with this rule. So that says, okay, determiner, adjective, and noun, and um, we can derive something like a simple example or something like that, right? Or an interesting book. Um, but the question is, uh, what about 36? Uh, alle weiteren schlagkräftigen Argumente or other strong argument. So if you have like two adjectives, well, think about it for a second or two. And one suggestion may be, okay, we have one adjective here, then we just write down a rule with another adjective. So that would be determiner, adjective, adjective, now. Okay, but then there is no limit on that we can uh, iterate adjectives and um, of course at a certain point we will not understand what uh, people are talking about or um, we, we cannot keep in memory all the adjectives that have been used. That doesn't make sense but in principle we don't want to have, we don't want to say um, there can be only six, as for instance, Schinko says, for, for different reasons. But um, uh, that's, we don't want to say that. And one way to express that there can be arbitrarily many uh, adjectives is that we put a star, a so-called Kleene star after the adjective. That means that there can be um, as many as we want. Okay. Um, but important, it has to be a finite number. Um, okay, so that is 
quite nice. But what about the examples in 40? Um, we cannot account for these with, with the rule that combines determiner, adjective, and noun in one go. What uh, our constituency tests seem to suggest is um, that we uh, have to have some way to combine adjective and noun first, and then um, the constituents we get there can be coordinated. So the example is uh, alle großen Seeelefanten und grauen Eichhörnchen, so all big uh, elephant seals and gray squirrels. Um, there, there is the combination of this adjective noun sequence and the other adjective noun sequence. So if we want to capture that in phrase structure grammars, um, we have to have these subconstituents. Um, so if we assume the rules in 41, we get exactly what we want. Um, so we have our uh, original rule, determiner, uh, and something nominal. And this something nominal uh, is, is something new now. So we have an n bar, uh, and this n bar can be combined with an adjective to yield another, or no, the other way. Oh, sorry. The adjective can be combined with an n bar, and the result is uh, again an n bar. Then we have this little thing we have to talk about that. Um, so what this this is something nasty we will discuss it later on it basically says that a noun can function as an n bar so you see that in the tree here so this uh, uh, noun squirrel can function as an n bar and as such we can combine it with a determiner and we get an np so that's the the last rule here but the uh, interesting thing is the adjective uh, a modification rule where we combine an adjective and a noun and the result that we get is an n bar. So n bar with adjective uh, is n bar. So that's very interesting and um, what you see here is that we can do that as often as we want. So because adjective and n, n bar, is n bar, we can apply the rule again. So big uh, gray squirrel. So this second adjective uh, is combined with um, the n bar and we get an n bar again. So you see it's uh, several n bars here and rules that, that can feed themselves are called recursive rules and uh, the, the grammar licenses re recursive structures and because of that we can be we can have um, arbitrarily long sequences of words um, that are licensed by our grammar and the the set of sentences that is licensed by our grammar will be infinite so that is uh, the thing uh, we talked about in the first uh, lecture um, the the grammars, these phrase structure grammars we are talking about uh, are supposed to enumerate sets and these sets uh, can be infinite depending on the rules that are in the grammar. But if you have something like that, then uh, you can have, it, it may be the case that uh, your, your sets get infinite. Okay, so so there is this little thing here that's nasty. We we will talk about that later. It's here, right here. It's just used to start to get at the level where the recursion is possible, right? So start things off. Um, okay, so we had adjectives before in our rules, but uh, we can have other adjuncts as well. So in uh, 2042, we have uh, a PP adjunct or a relative clause adjunct. So both of these can attach to, uh, to N bar and we get an N bar again and therefore we can have as many as we want. So this means we, we just had uh, how many 
three and these two. So we have five rules and with these rules we can derive all these NPs uh, and many more, of course, that we discussed initially. So that's something nice already. So we don't have to write down that um, a sentence or a noun phrase with a PP adjunct may also occur with an adjective or something like that. So that just follows from the rules we have. Okay, so now to this uh, rule that starts the recursion off. Um, until now, the, the n bar just consists of a single noun. That, that looks sort of silly and not necessary. Well, in fact it is, but uh, uh, it's not as worse as it seems now. Um, uh, so the, the nouns we look at so far are uh, boring in this respect, but there are some uh, nouns uh, that allow arguments in addition to adjuncts. So examples are shown in 43, uh, der Vater von Peter, das Bild vom Gleimtunnel, das Kommen der Installateuren. So um, uh, all of that is possible. And the, the noun, father, picture, or the coming of somebody uh, all take another argument. So they take something um, with which they have a semantic relation. So if you have father, then it's the person you are talking about, uh, the, the, the noun refers to a certain person, and then this person is in the fatherhood uh, relation to somebody else. So in, in the example, it's Peter. And the same is true for picture. If you have a picture, then, then you talk about the picture itself, and then there's something on the picture. Um, so these these nouns are called relational nouns and the interesting thing is that their arguments uh, complements are combined with them before adjuncts attach so the the rule we have for that is that uh, the bare noun is combined with a with a pp or np in the genitive and the result is an n bar okay so this is the structures we get uh, in, in terms of trees, displayed as trees. Um, the, the first tree shows a, a relational noun with a complement, uh, just as a complement, and the second one shows an, an adjunct in addition. So here the n goes to n bar combining with a complement and then the n bar combines with the determiner to form an NP. And on the left-hand side, we have um, this n bar combined with an adjunct in addition. So the picture of the spilt from Gleim tunnel in Gropius bar. So the picture of the Gleim tunnel in the Gropius bar. So this is a location that is provided in addition to the um, theme of the, or topic of the picture. The interesting thing is that this is um, like like the the project we had uh, before. So we had the woman or the man or the child or whatever, right? And they these NPs just didn't have the uh, complement here, and instead had this unary branching projection. So the noun went to n bar without combining with anything, right? So that was what we saw in the first NP trees. Now, the interesting thing is that um, we have structures uh, where the noun is missing, but we have adjuncts present. So 45 shows some examples, ein uh, interessantes, Ein neues Interessantes, ein Interessantes aus Japan, ein Interessantes, das wir kennen. So that's basically all the nominal structures we saw, but with uh, the noun missing. So book is left out. It's an elliptical structure in, in German. It's possible in English as well, um, but usually you have a, a, a pronoun one or pronominal one in there. So an interesting one a new interesting one and so on. So 
uh, in, in English, you can have uh, something for the rich or uh, for the skeptical or something like that. Um, and it's, um, it, it's less frequent, but it, the, the construction with an empty noun also exists. Okay, um, we can also have uh, these, these nouns missing in uh, situations where we have a complement. So uh, examples are in uh, 46. Nein, nicht der Vater von Klaus, der von Peter war gemeint. So no, it wasn't the father of Klaus, but rather the one of Peter that was meant. And again, uh, with a picture, nein, nicht das Bild von der Stadtautobahn, das vom Kleintunnel war beeindruckend. And nein, nicht das Kommen des Tischlers, das der Installateurin ist wichtig. So um, to capture that, one uh, has something interesting in, uh, in uh, phrase structure grammars. It's called uh, epsilon productions. And the notation for this is um, that some symbol is just replaced by nothing. Um, so that doesn't read well. So some people um, introduce some research as assume a special um, symbol for nothing. So that's the epsilon here. And um, that's therefore these uh, rules uh, are called epsilon productions. Okay. Um, so you can think of this uh, empty element there um, in, in our box analogy in a way that you say, okay, we have our labeled boxes, but in one of these boxes, there's just nothing in there. So it's like um, you, you always, when you move to the new flat, you put all your pictures into a box and label that box says um, wedding pictures or whatever, birthday pictures. And then somebody takes out these pictures and doesn't tell you, but that doesn't matter. So the box is still there. It has a place in the cupboard and you are happy to believe that this is a box with the um, holiday pictures and it fulfills its functions. It uh, keeps you, um, yeah gets your mood up because you always think that's the uh, box with the pictures of the holiday, right? And that's that's the same uh, with these empty elements. So they are sitting there in, in a labeled box. They have a certain category and um, have a certain function in the uh, stable construction of a nominal phrase. And they also provide a meaning, right? So like in the example, here, so in English, you have the one uh, anaphora, this uh, pronoun element that refers to something. And in, in German, you would have an, this elliptical element that has the noun meaning where of, of the elided element. Okay, so this is the, um, the tree you get. Uh, you have an interesting oops, yeah, book. So book is just taken out of the box. But apart from that, the complete nominal structure is uh, constant. So it's like a normal nominal structure. And with a complement, it works the same. Das vom Gleimtunnel um, build is just not pronounced here. Okay, um, so we saw examples where the noun was missing. Um, the determiners can be missing as well. So in the plural, that's the same in German and uh, English. Uh, we can have books, books that we know, interesting books, interesting books that we know. So all that is covered uh, if we just assume an empty determiner. And the same is possible with mass nouns. So we have uh, grain uh, that can be used without uh, a determiner grain that we just that just uh, ju that has just been ground uh, fresh grain fresh grain that that just ground <laughs> that has just been ground um, so um, 
all, all these structures appear without the determiner. So the way to deal with it that is parallel with what we saw so far is that one assumes an empty determiner and then we have books and um, um, the, the normal nominal structure uh, is not there as well. And to make things really crazy, um, we have the interesting situation in German uh, that determiners and nouns uh, are omitted at the same time. So we have something like ich lese interessante, um, dort drüben steht frisches, das gerade gemahlen wurde, and there both determiner and noun are missing. Of course, that's all the same nominal structure, no problem at all. And, um, but if you don't like that, and if you want to just name patterns of, of stuff that occur together, then uh, things get really ugly because you would have to say, okay, um, an argument of a verb can be a relative clause with an adjective, or it's, it's difficult to formulate that in rules. Um, so, what we just saw is um, one precise and um, easy way to, to capture the nominal, nominal structures in general. So this is uh, the, the corresponding tree, uh, empty determiner, adjective, uh, empty noun, and the whole structure that we see is the same and we can attach further adjuncts and so on. Okay, um, until now we only dealt with simple adjectives. So there was a symbol was just A in the rules. Uh, but if we look at uh, German, we see that these prenominal adjectival phrases can be very complex. So uh, we can have der seiner Frau treue Mann, der auf seine Tochter stolze Mann, der seine Frau liebende Mann, der von seiner Frau geliebte Mann. So here we see, in the first two examples, we have uh, really real adjectives. In the second two, we have adjectival participles, but both, uh, in both cases, we have further arguments like uh, dative objects or prepositional objects. Um, so simple adjectives are not, that's not sufficient to have that in the rule. What we have to have is um, adjectival phrases, right? And the case where the adjective doesn't have an argument is just the subcase of uh, the general adjectival phrase case. So this is the, uh, what we could assume as rules for the adjectival phrases. Uh, adjectival phrases can consist of NPs and an adjective or PPs and an adjective, or they can just be bare adjectives. So this is the case where we have a prepositional object attaching to the adjective, right? So that would be 54B. Okay, um, what about prepositional phrases? The syntax of prepositional phrases is relatively straightforward. Uh, we can assume a rule combining just a preposition and the noun phrase resulting in a, a PP. But um, there are some cases that are more complex and that is, uh, 56 shows examples from the Duden grammar, uh, the German reference grammar. Uh, and what you see here is that additional material can be combined with a, a prepositional phrase. So we have einen Schritt vor dem Abgrund, kurz nach dem Start, schräg hinter der Scheune, mitten im Urwald. So it's an, an adjective uh, combined with a PP, a uh, nominal phrase combined with a PP, and it's always measurement phrases. So there is a certain type of phrase that can go there, and it can be only one, right? So you cannot have ein Schritt um, kurz vor dem Abgrund or something like that, where, where you have 
multiple uh, so-called specifiers. Um, so in rules that would look as in 58, um, what we do is uh, that we introduce an intermediate level for the combination of uh, preposition and noun phrase. So we have preposition and noun phrase together is P bar, and then the P bar can project to PP. Then we will not have uh, something like ein Schritt or something uh, like an adjective phrase, or we can combine the P bar with an adjective phrase or with an NP. So we have three possibilities to, for structures of prepositional phrases. Okay, so this would be the trees. Um, for dem Abgrund, um, we have four combined with NP, um, building the, the P bar. And there's no specifier, nothing additional, no measurement phrase. So it's just a PP without anything else. And here we have the uh, case with quotes for the upgrund, um, where an adjectival phrase is added. And again, preposition and NP form a P bar, and uh, then quotes is added to form the full PP. Now, um, you may have noted that there uh, are some similarities between these rules. So I, I use this bar notation. Um, and if we look at 59, we see that the, the rules are really similar, right? So we have the, the lexical element N and P combined with something else and the result is a P bar and an N bar respectively. So um, if you look at the, the next level up, we see, okay, there is one uh, further constituent and uh, if we combine that with an N bar or P bar, we get uh, a full phrase, NP or PP. And if we now look at English, uh, APs and, and VPs, we see that their structure is uh, similar. So let's do that. Um, that's the uh, adjectives, uh, adjectival phrases we have in English. So Kim and Sandy are proud, very proud, proud of their child, very proud of their child. So that's the, the options we have in adjectival phrases in English. And the rules for that are given in 62. So uh, the adjective can project to a bar without anything that would be just proud. It can be combined with a PP, proud of their child, or, or and we can have before the R, a bar an adverb like very, or we can have nothing, right? So that's uh, the rules and um, the well, as a side remark, that doesn't work for German, but um, let's have a look at the trees first. Um, so, so this is uh, the simple case, just proud adjective, uh, a bar, adjectival phrase, very proud um, with a specifier here, this additional element licensed by this rule, or um, proud with a uh, prepositional object, without a uh, degree uh, phrase. And here we have all the possibilities that are licensed by the structure. So this is very nice, the same schema for, for rules, uh, for adjectives, and uh, for VP, it's uh, similar. Now, what, what we can do now is that we uh, abstract even further. So what we did so far is that we had rule schemata saying an NP consists of a determiner and a noun, or may consist of a determiner and a noun, and then there are certain features and they have to be the same across these uh, symbols. Uh, so if you have a number here and number there, number there, then their value, the values there have to be the same. We don't care for 
which values are inserted there, but we want to be them the same. So if we have uh, a noun with feminine gender, um, then the determiner has to have the same gender and so on. Um, now we can do the same uh, with the part of speech information. So in, in the little computer program we played with, um, this information here is privileged information. So that has to be uh, given, right? So we can put something in brackets, um, but that has to be a, a, a constant. That's not the case for, for XBAR theory, the thing we want to look at right now. So they, they abstract even further and replace this by variables as well. Um, so instead of AP and PP, PVP and so on, we just write XP and then uh, we have just one very general rule instead of, uh, for instance, these two rules, right? So PP goes to P bar, AP goes to A bar. We can just write XP goes to X bar. Um, yeah, for X bar series, there are some basic assumptions made. So X zero or just X without a zero uh, is the head, the lexical head, um, like a simple word. Uh, X bar is an intermediate level. Um, it's also written X with a bar or on top of it, or this is more for, for, for people who have a typewriter instead of a computer. Um, so that's sort of the lazy uh, way to write that down. Um, yeah, so this is the, the proper notation X bar and therefore because of this bar, uh, the name of the schema is as it is. Um, XP is the highest node, so one, one node above the intermediate level and it corresponds to two bars or two primes and this XP is also called maximal projection. So this um, is are two pictures showing the maximal and the minimal expansion of phrases. Um, here on this side, we have just the X, X bar and XP without any uh, complements and without any uh, specifier, without any additional elements. And I, I also, I always call that the, the post Xmas tree. Um, so uh, in late December, when Xmas is over, Christmas is over, um, people throw their trees out of this or to the street and um, the the branches are off basically so you can um, i don't know the english word you can use it to make a uh, an quill from it so it's basically not 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 much on it um, and um, this this is the set christmas tree and this is a nice tree uh, with all the things filled in uh, with complements, adjuncts, and uh, specifiers. Um, yeah, adjuncts are optional. So this, this projection from X bar to another X bar uh, is not necessarily there. Um, as you see here, there's just one X bar. Um, yeah, some categories do not have a specifier or it is optional. So then this branch here is missing. It, but just the branch is missing. So the projection has to be there in uh, the most restrictive version of the theory. Um, sometimes uh, a junction to XP or to X to the lexical element is possible as well. So then it's not just 
here, but also here and here. If you have a junction to XP, then the result of adjoining an, an adjunct to the XP is another XP. If you adjoin to X, the result of adjoining is another X. So what you see on this slide um, is the set of rules that were assumed by Ray Jackendorf. Um, so X bar with two bars uh, may consist of a specifier and uh, an X. Uh, X bar can consist of an X bar and an adjunct. The adjunct can be to the right of X bar or to the left of X bar. And uh, the last rule is X combined with complements forms X bar. So this star here means that there may be as many as uh, there have to be. Um, that was in the beginning in the 70s. Nowadays, people usually assume that uh, structures are binary branching, at least in government and binding and related Chomskyan uh, frameworks. Um, but yeah, this, this is the original suggestion. So here I give you some examples with concrete categories. So a noun plus a prepositional phrase may form an n bar. n bar with adjective phrase forms an n bar. n bar with relative clause forms an n bar. And n bar with determiner forms an uh, NP. Okay, so the interesting point is that the X always appears on both sides of the rule, right? So that's the head in the rule. Here to the right, you find some example strings uh, showing the application of that uh, specific rule. Okay, that's it.